Hi, child. It's your boy, Boss P. Welcome back to another episode of Boss P TV. And today, man, I want to talk to y'all about something going on in America right now that's literally tearing a country apart. What I want to talk to y'all about is the migrant crisis and uh, America's response to it. I also want to go into uh, the difference, the differences between the people that they're letting stay and the people that they're not letting stay. All right. Now, if you have not heard, uh, there's a crisis going on at the border. Everybody from South America are coming up through Mexico, Mexico and uh, Mexicans also. They're coming up to the border and they're being allowed to cross illegally by the United States uh, because uh, they are saying that these people are asylum seekers and they are seeking refuge from the war and the violence that is taking place in their respective countries in South America. Now, um, these uh, people are coming up. They are subsequently being put on buses from Texas and from Arizona, red states, and they're being sent to sanctuary cities in blue states all across America, primarily New York City and Chicago. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I just want to get into the response to it by uh, uh, the uh, authorities in New York, the mayor, the governor, and also uh, law enforcement, and also just the government period, the federal government period. They're allowing it to happen, but they have no plan uh, uh, as far as how they're going to house these people, how they're going to feed these people, how they're going to take care of these people once they get here. All right, so just take a look at some clips from the news where they're talking about the crisis and uh, how America's handling it, how the sanctuary cities are handling it. I will right, we'll be right back. Federal officials are telling New York City to improve its handling of the migrant crisis. The mayor, Eric Adams, says it's impossible without the resources the city needs, like federal money and expedited work authorizations. Meanwhile, the conflict over where to place the thousands of asylum seekers is growing. Protest over migrant shelters happening all over the city as no real solutions seem to be in place. So I that see that's what I'm talking about. You brought them here, Bashan but you have nowhere to put them. She is the chair of the city council's immigration committee. She joins us this morning. Thanks so much. For all right. Now, here. listen to this lady right here. I pretty much disagree with everything she said. All we've seen recently is the federal government pointing its finger at New York City. All right. Now, see, that's another problem. There's too much pointing the finger going on. Nobody wants to take the blame. You know what I mean? But it's the federal government's fault. You know, it's the sanctuary city's fault because they wanted this responsibility. And now it's blowing up in their faces. But let's get back to it understand uh, how serious uh, this is that we've been welcoming asylum seekers and we're reminded what kind of a city um, New York City is rooted in in uh, the values of care compassion you was the care and compassion for the poor people city, who are already here reminds us that this is a city uh, where you belong this is a city where you can seek refuge and dignity um, and so right now as we uh, understand the scale of how many more folks escaping violence escaping economic destitution and war will come to New York City. Now, now, now she's talking about violence, destitution and war. It is violence, destitution and war right here, right here. Now, yeah, there's violence and destitution and war where these people are coming from. But we have it right here. All right. Every other month, the, the, the district attorney is uh, holding a press conference talking about another 20 or 30 gang members who they take off the streets. Right. You see homeless people, the destitution, homeless people living on the trains and living in, in on, literally sleeping on the streets in New York City already. You see the violence. People are getting hurt and killed. All it, I mean, look, man, I'm not against these people coming here. I just want them to come here legally. You know what I mean? I want them to come here legally and I want the Haitian people who are f fleeing violence, destitution and uh, 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 war in their countries to have the same benefits, to receive the same treatment that these fairer skinned uh, people who are migrating to the United States are receiving. And, and that goes right along with the Ukrainians also, not just the people from South America. But let's get back into it. Um, every leader has to step up. And the, Where does it start, the finger, the finger pointing has to end. Every level of government has responsibilities. With the city council, we've been pushing uh, our mayor to invest in $70 million in full... $70 million. $70 million. Where's that money coming from? And don't believe the BS when they say it's coming from the federal government because guess what? It's not. It's coming from your pockets. You pay taxes, you subsidize the federal government, the, sub the federal government uh, in turn subsidizes all these uh, migrants who are coming here. All right. Don't believe that it's not coming out of your pocket. It's coming out of your pocket directly. All right. It's tax money, our tax money and 70 million dollars that could go towards something being built or repaired or or, or uh, improved in your community is going towards these migrants. But let's get back into representation. it. 
Asylum seekers have one year from the, the moment they get to New York City to apply for asylum. Mm -hmm. That application process is arduous. It is tedious. It so is what's the status long. with the first crop of migrants that arrived last year? So that's it's, it's a little confusing. Because All right. Now you heard that. Now you heard that it's a little confusing. You know what that means? It means ain't nothing going on with them. It means that we're still paying to house them. We're still paying to feed them. We're still paying to clothe them. And there's no end to it in sight. Because the, the, the scope of full representation hasn't been there. Um, not every single person who has arrived has been able to successfully match um, with legal services to start their application. And then after 150 days of applying uh, for asylum, they can then apply for work authorization, I just, which we know there's a backlog. I, so I want the solution to be clear, though, because the mayor is saying we need more money. Sure. The federal government is saying, actually, it's you guys who are not handling this correctly. But where is the crux? Where is the issue that needs to be fixed? What that something that exactly. Let's see how she answers this. Well, we, we need to reject that premise that there's only one level of government I mean, there's responsible, multiple, right? There's multiple. And that's, why, and that's why you know I'm articulating that the mayor is right to call on the federal government um, to uh, expedite work authorizations. Yeah. That bottleneck uh, it rests on our federal government. All right. Now, see, I have to disagree with what she's saying talking about how everything rests on the federal government. The federal government did not declare New York City a sanctuary city. The mayor did this, okay? Um, did this happen all the way back in Ed Koch days? Uh, the mayor, uh, Ed, Ed Koch, uh, from, oh, this was decades ago. But uh, mayors who have come after him have uh, signed a legislation that has renewed this whole policy, all right? And New York City has remained a sanctuary city. So uh, how, how, how is it on the federal government to give us money to take care of all these migrants when we're the ones who said we will take them in in the first place. Now, I believe it's the federal government's responsibility to stop these people at the border. And once they have captured them, they need to or apprehended them. They need to deport them. They need to repatriate them. But um, it's 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 kind of difficult because these people have a right to asylum. All right. This is a matter of international law. These people have a right to asylum. And um, the, uh, the United States can't just turn them away. My thing is, why bring why bring them to New York? C Again, we are a sanctuary city. So that's the whole crux of the argument right there. We are a sanctuary city. Uh, the mayor has signed, like I said, signed the legislation making it so. But why not send these people to places like Wyoming, Wisconsin, Idaho, Nebraska? You have tons of space out there. Why send them to the most populated city in the United, in the United States of America? You send them to you send them to a, a a a a a region that has five boroughs and eight million people, eight million people, the most populous area in the entire country. You send them here. We need to send these people to the Midwest where they have the space. All right. You put up a few tents. You bring in some porta potties. Boom. You're good to go. All right. Let's get back New into Yorkers it. New Yorkers don't want street homelessness. We are in a city that has uh, a right to shelter. And this yeah. decree is the cornerstone of our but social safety net. The right to house. Because once they max out of shelter, out of the shelter system and the temporary cots and the makeshift um, housing facilities, what about permanent housing? All right. Now, see, this is another issue, the housing situation. Right. You remember last month or maybe a couple months ago, the mayor was actually asking New Yorkers to open up their homes to these migrants. All right. They wanted us to open up our homes. Uh, they, they wanted these people to come live with us and our families. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. I pay too much in taxes. You pay too much in taxes for somebody in his position. And why not have him go stay at Gracie Mansion? Open up the doors at Gracie Mansion. That's what we want. Right, let's get back that is it, the direction that myself and many of my colleagues in the council have been pushing for, including through a package of uh, rent rental voucher reforms that the mayor recently vetoed. Yes. Right. Thank you, Mayor Adam, for that veto. Rental vouchers come out of my pocket and yours. Let's get back into it. Right. We, we need I, to move people out I of the just, I do system. have to ask, though, because speaking on behalf of New Yorkers who do want to be welcoming, the fact that we are taking in over 100,000 migrants and paying for them, paying for their housing, paying for the food, it's also removing what New Yorkers are receiving in terms of care, education. The budget has to be crushed and it has to be, money has to be moved around and that's being taken away from New Yorkers. So you do also have to understand that people are still upset about this and we have to, the mayor is saying we gotta put a stop to it, but there's no stop in sight. All right, now she sees exactly where I'm coming from. Me and her are coming from the same place. It's all about resources, financial resources. It's about space. It's about safety. It's about sanit well, sanitation. Um, uh, when, when, 
the budget is like one huge bag of potato chips, right? You only have so many people that this bag of potato chips can feed. Now, if you bring 30 more people into the party, guess what? There's less chips to go around now. All right. So all the people who were at the party before who kicked in and put money in to purchase this bag of potato chips, they now have to share with 30 people who are crashing a the party. They were not invited. They didn't bring any food and they're going to be spending the night. Nah, man, I got a problem with that. I have a huge problem with that. And again, like I said, I'm not against immigration. I am against illegal immigration. And basically what is taking place here is illegal immigration that has been sanctioned by the federal government and by New York City. And it's not fair. I want I, I want more potato chips. I want the potato chips, the portion of potato chips that I paid for. All right. They, they owe it to me because I work and I pay taxes just like you. All right. Um, but I had enough of her. Let's get into another video right here. I am. Um, uh, all right, watch this. We'll be right back. The White House has some suggestions for where New York City can house some of the 60,000 asylum seekers that recently arrived. New Jersey, the Atlantic City International Airport is reportedly one of the 11 airport. sites That's that the Biden crazy. administration has suggested could be used as a potential shelter for illegal migrants. The airport is in New Jersey, and Congressman Jeff Andrew, it's in his district, and he joins well, us damn, now. he looked mad as hell. So my understanding, first of all, welcome, and, and my understanding is that this airport is in a very rural farm town. What do you make of that? What are, the, what are you hearing from the constituents um, that live there about their ability to you know, provide resources for this kind of an influx? They can't provide the resources. This is a town of 50,000 people. Uh, Atlanta County can't do it. This town can't do it. It should have never happened. Hopefully it won't happen. We're going to fight this with every ounce of strength that we have. It is the wrong thing. You know, when we said what was happening at the southern border was going to affect the entire United States of America, this is what happens. Yeah, it's bro. Yeah, bro. You were right. It is affecting the entire country. It's an Arizona problem or a Texas problem or a California problem. This is a United States of America problem. And now they want to come into our beautiful county, our beautiful South Jersey, and try to ruin that as well. There's also a national defense issue here. This is a very, very important issue to understand. We have the FAA Technical Center there who's doing very important work, some of it which is very significant for the safety of this country. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly my point. This is a national security issue. He wants to put them in an airport. Biden is crazy. It's part of the Air National Guard, 177 fighter wing. They are the first line of defense for Washington, D.C. and New York City. This is a disaster in the making. I, this is the worst administration I used to say in my lifetime. No, this is the worst administration in the history of the United States of America. All right. See, now he sounds angry and rightfully so. Rightfully so. I think he has a right to be angry. Uh, he's exactly right. You want to bring these people into his district. They have not been vetted. All right. Nobody's checking them to see if they have Corona, to see if they have tuberculosis, any of these other diseases. These these people. Do you realize these people are coming from Venezuela, Colombia, Mexico. They're coming from all over Southern America, uh, South America. Do you not think, or I would say, don't believe for one second that all these people are good natured people. All right. I am sure there is a population within all of these migrants that are trying to run away from their country to escape a uh, prosecution. There are people who are trying to escape law enforcement. And Mexico knows this. And what Mexico is doing is so ingenious. It's very, 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 very intelligent. They're saying, yo, listen, we have all these criminals over here. It's going to take us, it's going to cost us money to catch them. It's going to cost them money, cost us money to prosecute them. It's going to cost us money to incarcerate them. America is willing to take these people off our hands for free. Why wouldn't Mexico do this? It's the most intelligent move that they can make right now. They can get rid of everybody who they want to get rid of, and it's going to cost them nothing. Bravo to Mexico, man. All right, so now let's get into what's going on in Chicago. Chicago's migrant crisis is still growing this morning, and there's not a lot of solutions. Joni Lum explains where migrants are being put up and how many more have arrived in the last day. Chicago received two more busloads of asylum seekers just yesterday, and they're designating new places for temporary shelters. But 1,800 people are staying in police districts right now, and so seeing unhoused people around the city is much more common. Families with small children have been sleeping and spending their hours in police district lobbies as they await more suitable housing. All right. Now, did you hear what she said? These people are being housed in police station lobbies. Do you understand? Police station lobbies. Now, I had said something early about the Haitian people, right? The people in Haiti suffered a devastating earthquake years ago, still have not recovered. Uh, their president was assassinated few years ago still have not recovered right now haiti is pretty much the worst 
place you can possibly live in. All right. They have what they have no they have no sanitation services. They have no government. Right now, gangs are running the country. OK, the capital, nobody can go in and out because it's under gang control. You have women who are being raped right out in the open. You have people who are being just uh, randomly kidnapped and held for ransom. You have people who are being ki just last week. I believe I, I was listening to a story or watching a story about uh, a group of nonviolent protesters who are walking through an area in Haiti and they were uh, protesting the gangs and the gang violence. And guess what happened? The gang members came out and killed them all one by one machine gun style. OK, now I want to know why the Haitian people are not being afforded the same level of respect, the same level of dignity, the same level of patience that our people to, to the south are receiving from the United States government. I'll tell you why. And it all has to do with skin color. Unfortunately, it always comes back to that. OK, right now, right right now, just in New York City, you have over 100,000 people who have come across the border who have been put on buses and bussed up. To New York City, staying in hotels that you and I have to pay for. OK, 100,000. Do you know how many Haitian people have been sent back since Joe Biden got into office? Over 20,000 Haitian people arrive here. Uh, the uh, 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 authorities apprehend them. And guess what they do? They put them on a plane, fill that plane with fuel and fly that plane back to Port-au-Prince. Over 20,000 Haitians who have been seeking asylum here. They've been trying to escape violence. They've been trying to escape war. They, 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 they've been trying to escape destitution and poverty. And Joe Biden said, mm, I don't think so. He puts them on a plane and sends, and sends them back to Port-au-Prince. Now, again, I, I hate to make it racial, but what other explanation is there? You have people in Ukraine who have come here seeking asylum. And right now they're being paid pensions. Once they fill out that paperwork, they have access to the um, the uh, safety net services and they're getting money every single week. They're getting a pension. They have access to SSI. Why aren't the Haitian people receiving these same benefits? And again, Ukrainian people look like Joe Biden and Haitian people do not. And therein lies the issue. It, it, it always I'm, I'm sorry that I have to bring this up, but it always comes back to that. There's no other explanation because what's going on in Haiti. I hate to compare bad situations, but from what I've seen, what I've read, what's going on in Haiti is maybe just a little bit worse than what's going on in Venezuela and what's going on in parts of Mexico. I mean, the cartel is no joke. Cartel violence is no joke, but you it's it's it's. Six of one, half a dozen of another. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to say one tragedy is worse than another. But I mean, man, what's going on in Haiti is horrible, horrible. But that does not stop the United States government from putting them on a plane and sending them back home. All right, let's get back into it. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, let's not get back into it. You know, I want to leave it right here. I want to get your thoughts. I want to hear your opinions on this down in the comment section. Let me know. Are you someone who supports uh migrants coming across the border being put on a bus and being sent up to new york city chicago predominantly black areas being put into the best hotels being fed three meals a day all on your dime or are you someone who completely opposes the notion that asylum seekers while they do have the right to seek asylum once they get here they should be put in the best hotels. They should be given three square meals a day. They should be given preferential treatment because right now the government is looking to fast track their ability to work. They are seeking to fast track citizenship. Are you someone who opposes this or are you someone who is for this? Let me know down in the comment section. I'll tell you one thing. I said it before in this video and I'll say it again. I support immigration as long as it is legal. I am for legal immigration, not illegal immigration. And that's what's going on right now under the guise of uh, 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 the, the seeking of asylum. Now, listen, if the shoe is on the other foot 
And I'm like, man, I got to get out of here. This is the worst place ever. I need to get out of here. Let me go down to Mexico. Of course, I would want Mexico to bring me in and to treat me as one of their own. And I would expect Mexico to take care of me and my family, you know, because they, they have the same agreements, right? You can seek asylum there as, as, as well as you can seek asylum here. They have the same agreements, right? But I would not expect to be given prefer preferential treatment over Mexicans who have paid taxes, who have lived in their communities for as long as they've been alive. I would not expect to have preferential treatment over them. You know what I mean? And that's the whole problem. That's the whole problem. I believe that Mexico should be housing these people on their side of the border. I believe that they should be tent cities set up on the Mexico side of the border. And I believe that people from our government should go down there. They should uh, take applications for, for, for asylum seekers. And every case should be evaluated on a case by case basis. Everyone needs to be properly vetted. These people probably have no ID. You don't know who these people are. They could say they're anyone. They could pretend to be anyone. You have no idea who they are. And how are you going to really find out? How are you really going to find out? If they're coming from a place where there are no ID cards, there's, 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 there's still no real government in place. How, how are you going to find out? They don't have any services like we have here where there's a huge database of people with social security numbers and blah, 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 that you can just punch in a few keys and bring up a picture in your whole resume, your whole history. They don't have that there. You understand what I'm saying? So these people should be housed on the Mexico side of the border. Our people should go down there, take the applications, and everybody should wait to have their number called after being properly vetted, after evaluating their particular situation. That's what should be going on. We shouldn't just be bringing these people over, sending them to the biggest city in America, the most populated city in America, right? Right. And having them put up in the best hotels and you having them sleep in police stations in Chicago. That is a travesty. That's a slap in the face. Because the only way people of color get to sleep in a police station is if they're under arrest. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? All right. So, yeah, man, that's the way I feel about it. I feel like, yeah, they, they, when they're on the Mexico side of the border, maybe we can give a little bit of money to Mexico to help out with this situation. Although I'm sure Mexico is not giving us any money. You know what I mean? It's always us. It's always the American taxpayer who have to foot the bill for everything. You have aid going to Ukraine. We have to pay for that. You have money being spent on weapons and, and, and tanks and all kind of stuff. We have to pay for that. Right. All the support that we offer to countries all around the world who has to pay for it. We do. It's always us. It's always us. And that's what I have a problem with. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, but let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this uh, this uh, uh, a policy that we have showing preferential treatment to migrants. Um, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. If you were not aware, this is a really, really bad situation, and I can only see it getting worse because there are millions of people who are traveling on foot en masse through Mexico from South America up to the border, and they're going to get in because... You know, I've heard it said before and I didn't really believe it until now, but the Democrat Party, I think they're starting to realize that black people in this country are waking up and they can no longer just take our vote for granted. The black vote is no longer the Democrat vote. OK, I am hugely disappointed with Joe Biden, someone I voted for. I'm hugely disappointed with Kamala Harris who I don't feel like is doing anything. You know, I, I, I really do feel like I wasted my vote, but the only other vote was for Trump. And, you know, with everything that he was doing at the time, I wasn't really into him. I'm still not into him, to, to be completely honest. But his policy on, on border control, that's one I could get behind. The only issue that I had with Donald Trump and the, the, uh, his, his border policy was the wall. The wall was never going to happen. This isn't 100 years ago where you could have got this thing done for, you know, $200 million. It's not happening. A wall of that size covering o o over, almost, I believe, almost 2,000 miles of a uh, 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 border in between us and Mexico. That, that's going to cost tens of billions of dollars. It, it, it was never going to happen. Congress was never going to give him the money for that. And he, he never should have started it. I believe that we need to hire 
more people to patrol the border. We need to invest in technology that's going to uh, uh, monitor what's going on at the border also. That should have been where he spent the money. But I, I can get behind his policies, man. I really, really can. And I can honestly say that next next year, 2024, and it's not going to be a Democrat year for me or my family. I highly doubt it. Unless, you know, and I can't even say unless they talk about improving things because they always talk about improving things. But in the end, what do we really get? We don't really get much of anything or if anything. Right. So, yeah, man. But um, uh, that's all I got for y'all for right now. Let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this whole migrant issue. It's your boy, Boss P. This is Boss P. TV. And I'm out. See you on the next video.